imperialism is, as Lenin said in his, the title of his famous book, which the title being Imperialism, the last stage, the final stage of capitalism, imperialism is a stage of capitalism. Now capitalism always was a system where there was trade and a lot of what was produced in the capitalist heartland in the countries which went capitalist first, first before other countries, a lot of what they produced was sold abroad. So it isn't the fact that there is trade of goods produced in the capitalist countries abroad. Also, from very early on, there were banks that were there and played an important role in capitalist production. What is special about the period of imperialism, which comes into existence as a period, as a stage of capitalism, is that capitalism's main contradiction, which has produced periodic crises in capitalism, a contradiction between production the logic of production, what goes into the decision of the, capitalism, of the capitalist to produce more of whatever they produce, and what goes into the, uh, the conditions which underlie consumption of those goods, uh, what allows people who buy to buy the, the goods which have just been produced, these two essential features of capitalism, production of goods, the consumption of these goods, the, the reasons which go into them are incompatible aren't connected. They're, they're, they're not, there's no plan which ensures that the goods which get produced will be sold because the workers don't get paid enough and most of the workers are most of the consumers and therefore there's not enough money in their hands to buy the goods and there's every 10, 20 years a crisis which means too much goods and not enough people with money to buy it because the workers don't get enough pay. That's a sim very simple, very simple expression of the, un the cause of the crisis, periodic crises. Imperialism comes about at a point where this happens uh, more frequently in capitalism and happens on a larger and larger scale because capitalism is constantly producing more goods and the market is bigger and bigger. And consequently, capitalism is driven by the problems it is having in selling the goods to population in, its own, in each country and in the capitalist world, more and more problems on finding markets for those goods. So there's a pressure coming from this crisis, this contradiction, again, between the logic of production and the logic of consumption. There's a, this, the, the pressure is forcing the system to look for foreign markets. So they go into other countries not just to steal, because you had the Romans went, and not only the Romans, the Persians, the Turks, and the, uh, the French, and the British, they did these things earlier. They went into other countries and they stole what was there to steal, and they forced these countries to pay them tribute. But they didn't do it, and a little trade existed, but there was no pressure from the surplus of what was being produced in their own country and the need to find foreign markets. This was not a main reason why any of these imperialist, these countries which acted, the word is, the better word is colonialism. Before imperialism, countries were acting in a way, many countries, which looked like they were being imperialist, but it wasn't imperialism because it wasn't to sell products which they couldn't sell at home. In other words, it wasn't the reason, the main reason for those actions, which the imperialist countries began to undertake in the 19th century, the main reason wasn't coming from problems in their internal economy. So here, the problems for their actions of going abroad came from what they couldn't deal with in the way of getting rid of the goods being produced in their own countries. Now, the first form that that imperialism took was occupying those countries. So France occupied Vietnam. Britain occupied the countries it occupied at that period. Uh, France occupied Algeria, and uh, the G Germans left out. They came, they came into capitalism rather late, but when they came in, they came in very fast. And they had lots of extra goods that they needed to sell in the markets, and there wasn't much left of the world. The Americans had already, in effect, occupied much of Latin America and the Philippines. Now what's happened in, after World War I is that a lot of the ways in which the occupation has taken effect has been through the banks, has been through financial imperialism, especially after World War II. 
So we don't send in, although there's a little bit of that as well, we don't send in armies to take over the country. We give the country independence. We create a bourgeoisie in that country who we make rich and that we work through the bourgeoisie in Africa and Asia and other countries, in Latin America. And, and, and we get them to, we control them through their finance, through the financial sector and through their debts. And we're able to have markets in those countries and also and this is also post-World War II, the new form, there's a new form of imperialism, which is less military and more economic, financial, and industrial. We're also involved in outsourcing factories and using their cheap labor force to produce goods there, owned, in, owned by Western capitalists, and sell those goods back into Europe and America, but also sell them in the countries where the goods are being produced, like in China. And so capitalism has become much less brutal and obvious as it was in the time of Lenin and much more sophisticated and probably more effective. That is to say they managed to squeeze more money, more wealth out of these less developed countries in the current financialized version and industrialized version of imperialism than in the earlier version that Lenin described. But in both cases, you see, what distinguishes it as imperialism from colonialism, which existed in ancient Rome and in, you know, goes back as in early class societies, what distinguishes it as the pressure to get involved with these in invasions of other countries and trying to get their wealth comes from inside the economy and is not simply something that the ruling class which even a feudal ruling class or a slave ruling class could do in order to sit, simply steal, simply take the wealth of the countries that they send their armies into and take over physically. So the Roman Empire was dominated on the spot by Roman soldiers and the empires before the 19th century of the various countries was dominated on the spot by soldiers from the imperial power. Later, and in the first stage, this happened in the part that Lenin was talking about, a bit of this, but very quickly it's turning into financial and industrial imperialism, where the capitalists have become more sophisticated in how they can steal. And they also talk about giving these countries liberty, yes? So a country now is free, they just won their freedom from France or from England, but they're sending more of their wealth to the capitalist world than ever before. And so it's the new form, the latest form of imperialism.